What is going on guys welcome back in today's video we're going to build a simple blockchain in python so let us get right into it now before we get into the actual coding i want to talk a little bit about the theory behind blockchains so how they're basically structured no worries i'm not going to make it mathematical here or go into too many details i'm just going to give you a basic uh simplified explanation of how blockchains work so that we are able to implement them so that we understand what we're implementing um and what we're going to do here is we're going to just use the example of some uh, basic cryptocurrency that we're going to call neural coin and C and neural coin has transactions. So transaction one, for example, could be that Anna uh, sends Bob to neural coins and transaction actually and C like that. Uh, transaction two can be Bob sends Daniel. 4.3 NC. And transaction three can be something like Mark sends Charlie 3.2 neural coins. So those are three basic transactions. And these transactions can be stored in a block. So let's say we have the first block B1. This is the initial block. Um, and this initial block has uh, the information about those three transactions and we can say okay it's the initial block so it doesn't have any additional hash information any additional basis or we can just say it has the basis start or anything like that or aaa just because it's the first block and then it has transaction one transaction two transaction three as the data now we can hash this block and this block results in a certain hash output um, now usually we're going to to use for blockchains the char 256 function and we're going to do that in the coding as well but for now let's just pretend that we get some random hash function that uh, produces the output 76 fd89 for example uh, just a six letter a six digit hash a hexadecimal number here um, and this is the hash result of the first block now then i open up the second block and this block is also going to have information about some additional transactions. Now, I'm not going to write more transactions down, but you can imagine you will have transaction four, five, six with other uh, transaction uh, transactions like those three here. And we're just going to say, OK, we're going to have transaction four, transaction five and transaction six uh, in this block. But also we're going to have the basis of this block. So we're going to refer to the previous block by using its hash. So we're going to enter 76FD89 as a basis for this hash. So you can imagine it like that. Let's say we have some uh, function called neural hash, and this is just a random hash function. We're going to use SHA-256 uh, uh, so afterwards. Uh, but neural hash is just going to take the input of the transaction string. So this is the transaction, of course, in real cryptocurrencies. Uh, these are not just strings where it says Anna sends Bob to something, but it's actually more uh, like a number or a hash. But let's just say we take this string here. So we take the string of T1, the string of T2, the string of T3, and then we, uh, we take the string AAA. We append all of them or we, we concatenate all of them and then we calculate the hash. And this is the result of the neural hash function. So the same thing we do now for block two, we take transaction four, five, and six, we concatenate them, and we also add the hash of the previous function. So we can add the string version of that hash. So we just put some uh, quotation marks around it, and then we just concatenate this as well, and then we produce the next hash. And let's say the next hash is, for example, 8923FF. This is the hash of this uh, block here. And we can do this uh, with more and more blocks. But the basic idea is now you can maybe see why it's called a blockchain. It's a little bit like uh, like a reverse linked list uh, with the exception that you're not actually pointing to the block. So I cannot just use this hash uh, to navigate to block number one uh, because a hash is usually uh, done in a one way or in a one way fashion. So when I hash something, I can get the output, but it's very difficult to 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 get back to the origin. It's not like encryption where you have encryption and decryption, uh, but you're just hashing and then it's very hard to find out where this hash is coming from because hashing is trying to look kind of random. 
Um, and because of that, we cannot really navigate back to block one. So it's not actually a linked list, but it's a blockchain because we have the information of the previous block in, in the form of a hash in the next block. And then we have the information of this hash here, which contains this hash here as well, and the information about those transactions. And also in uh, indirectly, it contains the information about those three transactions, we take this as the basis of block three, so 8923FF. And then we have some more transactions, T7, T8, and so on. And this produces, uh, produces another hash and so on. And why is this important? It's important because you cannot just go ahead and change something because the whole thing is going to be messed up. The whole integrity is lost if you change a single bit. So for example, since hash functions look kind of random, a small change in the input, it's going to, uh, to produce a radical change in the output. So basically, if I change this here to not two, but 2.1, or to just one or anything like that, this hash is not going to change slightly. So it's not going to change like that it's going to look completely different. So if I change two to 2.1, this is going to be something like FA 56 BB, for example, which is a completely different hash. And because this changes, this is going to change as well. So this is now going to be FA 56 BB. And because of that, this is going to be completely different as well. So this is going to be 77 a B zero zero, for example. And because of that, this is going to change and so on. So the whole integrity of the blockchain is now disrupted just because we changed a tiny little bit. And because of that, we can we can verify the integrity by just going through all the transactions. And and actually, we don't need to go through all the transactions because we only need to to look at the last hash. And if anyone tries to to pretend like something else happened, the whole blockchain is going to end up in a completely different hash and it's not going to work out. So that is the basic idea of a blockchain. All right, so now we're done with the theory and we can start with the coding. We're going to start by importing the hashlib module, which is part of the core Python stack and we're going to use it for hashing. In particular, we're going to use the SHA-256 function. So we're going to say hashlib.sha-256, but we're not going to do this yet. We're going to use this later on. Uh, first of all, we're going to define a class, which we're going to call neural coin block. So this is going to be one block of the neural coin blockchain. And in its constructor in its initializer, we're going to pass the self keyword. And then the hash as we already talked about this, we're going to pass the hash of the previous block. So we're going to say previous block hash. And we're going to say uh, transaction list transaction list, because we need a list of all the transactions, the hash of the previous block, and then we're going to calculate uh, calculate a new hash for this particular block. Um, and now we're just going to say self dot previous block hash equals previous block hash self dot transaction list equals transaction list. And what we're going to do now is we're going to just uh, construct a data string. And you can do this in any way you want, you can just append all of them or concatenate all the strings, you can uh, combine them with a separator, which is what I'm going to do, you can do whatever you want. I'm just going to say self dot block data equals and then I'm going to use uh, the simple dash as a uh, as a separator. And I'm going to say join all the transactions. So join everything from the transaction list into one string. And then I'm also going to just say plus and again, the same separator and the previous block hash in the end. So this is the basic uh, construction method that I use here for the block data. And then we're going to say self dot block hash. This is going to be the resulting hash is going to be hash lip dot sha 256. And here we're going to pass this string. So self dot block data, we're going to have to encode it otherwise, it's not going to work. And then in order to get a string out of this, uh, or a hexadecimal uh, string, we're going to have to use the hex digest. So we're going to say hex digest. And this is how we calculate the hash. So this is a very simple class, it's actually done, we don't need anything but the constructor. And now we can go ahead and write some transactions. So I'm going to try to keep it simple here. So we're going to say, uh, t1 Anna sends to nc to Mike, 
and we're going to copy that now. And we're going to change this to two, three, four, five, let's, let's do a six as well. And we're going to have just two transactions per block. Um, and first of all, Anna sends two neural coin to Mike, then Bob sends, then Mike sends, then Daniel sends, then Mike sends again, and then one more time, Mike sends something here. Um, and first of all, or the first time we send two neural coins, then we send four point, come on, 4.1, then we have 3.2, 0 0.3, 1 and 5.4. And in the first transaction, Mike is the receiver. In the second transaction, Mike is also the receiver. Then Mike is going to be sending to Bob. Then uh, Daniel is going to be sending to Anna. Mike is going to be sending to Charlie. And then Mike is going to be sending to Daniel. Like that. Those are the transactions and now we can just go ahead and create an initial block. Uh, so we're going to say initial block is going to be neural coin block. And here we're just going to either pass nothing, uh, but I think if we pass none, this is not going to work. So we can pass an empty, empty string or we can uh, just choose a basic initializing message. So like initial string like that <clears throat> doesn't really matter. Um, and what we can now do is we can pass a list of transactions. So here we're just going to say T1, T2. And by doing that, we're going to take all the individual strings of that list. We're going to join them with the separator. We're going to combine this uh, with the previous block hash, which is in this case, just an initial string. And then we're going to calculate a hash. So we can actually try and do that right now uh, by just saying print initial block dot block data so to see uh, so that we can see what this looks like and then block hash as well. And we're going to open up a terminal. And we're going to navigate here and we're going to say Python three main dot py. Uh, I hope I'm not blocking again. Let me just check here. No, seems good. Um, let me just see if I didn't block any code. No, I shouldn't be blocking any code. Um, but as you can see, we get Anna sends two and C to Mike, Bob sends 4.1 and C to Mike initial string, and then we get this hash as a result. Now, let me just show you really quick what happens if I change one tiny little bit. So let's say Bob didn't send 4.1 neural coin to Mike, but 4.2 neural coins to Mike. So if we do that and we rerun this, it's going to be a completely different hash, as you can see. It's not just slightly different, it's completely different. Uh, and this this is not uh, different every time we do it, so this is always the same hash, but if we change something in the input, we're going to get a radical difference in the output. So this is very important. Uh, and now we can create a second block. So we can say second block equals neural coin block, and here we're going to use the hash of the previous block as, um, as a basis here. So we're going to say initial block dot uh, block hash. And then we're going to have transaction three and transaction four. And we're going to print this data as well. So we're going to copy that and I'm going to Oh, sorry, I'm going to change this here to second block like that. Come on. Ah second block, there you go. And we can now run this. And you can see that we get Mike sends uh, 3.2 to Bob, Daniel sends 0 0.3 to Anna, and then we get the hash of the previous one and we get a hash. As you can see, they're all fixed size, no matter what the input string is, they're all going to have the same size. Um, and we can now also go ahead and create a third block. And then we're going to see how these blocks are interconnected. So we're going to actually just copy this here. And we're going to um, print this. And we're going to change this to third block. I'm going to change this to third block. Come on. 
the mic is blocking my sight, so I'm pressing the wrong keys here. There you go. Uh, and here we're not going to use the initial block as a basis, but we're going to use the second block as a basis, which indirectly means that we're actually using the first block as a basis as well. And here we're going to pass transaction five and transaction six. So as you can see, we now have the initial block with the first two transactions, then the second block with three and four, and the third block with five and six. And the third block is based on the second block, which is based on the initial block, which is just based on a random string here, uh, or an initial string, it's not random, actually. Uh, and I can now run this and we can see a bunch of different hashes. But the interesting part is right now that if I change anything in the first hash, we're going to get a completely different result in all of these hashes. So let's just go ahead and change um, this again to not 4.2, but 4.3, for example. If I now look at this, we can see that not only the first hash is different, but as a result of that, since this is the basis for the second hash, we can see that the second hash is also completely different. And so is the third one. So it's a completely different result just because we changed one thing. So you cannot disrupt the integrity of the blockchain by changing some tiny thing in a previous uh, transaction in the past because the whole blockchain is based on that. So every future transaction has to be based on this block here. And if it isn't based on this block, we're going to see that this uh, th that it is not based on this block, because we're going to see that there is something wrong uh, with the hash, it's not the right hash. So uh, the people are going to see that the hash is different from their hash, and they're not going to accept your manipulation of the transactions. So that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed and I hope you learned something. If so, let me know by hitting a like button and leaving a comment in the comment section down below. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to this channel in order to see more future videos for free. Other than that, thank you very much for watching. See you in the next video and bye.